Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Integrated Math 2. In today's episode, we'll be discussing chapter 5.1.1, which is investigating the graphs of quadratic functions. And in this problem, we are going to be introduced to a new type of graph. And uh, I would encourage you to read this letter that we have to read from Miss Function CEO, where basically uh, we're being asked to take a look at all of these functions from A through J below. And so uh, we'll go and pick a couple to look at and, um, and then we'll see what type of graph they create as well as the attributes of these graphs. And before we even choose a few to, to look at, uh, just look at the commonalities between all the graphs of A through J. The one that stands out the most, and this is really the only one that you need to pay attention to, is that they all have, they all have this aspect to it that is being squared. So if you look at this, x squared x squared, x squared. Look at g, it's negative x squared. And so pay attention to those things. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and choose a few of these to look at. And then, uh, and then we'll graph them, we'll make a table out of them. And then we will discuss their attributes. All right, I'll see you in a bit. So I ended up using a for my first example here. And I just ended up plugging it into Desmos for purposes of this video, but if you look at the table that is below A, uh, what I ended up doing was I ended up punching all of these values into the A function. You see how the A function matches right here. Um, and so I ended up getting all these values. Now we've done a few of these examples on quizzes before where we end up just plugging in a bunch of values and getting a bunch of uh, coordinates that we end up plugging into a graph that ends up looking like this U-shaped. Now, remember in the letter, um, the CEO misfunction uh, does say that all of these uh, graphs are written in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, our standard form of a parabola, uh, and this u-shaped is called a parabola. So, so here are the attributes of this graph right here. Um, so a couple of things to take note of. One, it is u-shaped. The other one is that it is symmetrical. Uh, and so if we drew a line uh, that could cut this thing in half, we actually would cut it in half. And that line happens right here. Let me go ahead and draw it real quick. It happens right here down the middle. If you can see that purple line, that purple line right there. Now, if you notice the table behaves the same way, if you look at the, if you look at this point here, one comma negative nine, which just so happens to be where this purple dot is. And that doesn't contrast with the, uh, with the red particularly well, this blue dot right here now that contrasts very well, this dot here is at one comma negative nine, right? It's, it's halfway between zero and two and it's one space away from the 10. And so, uh, so yeah, so this, this would be known as the vertex, the vertex of the parabola, right? Uh, which is the space where it opens up, the center of it. A couple other things, if you notice, if you look at the negative two here and the four here, these are the x-intercepts, the x-intercepts of the graph. Now, if you look at the distance between the x-intercepts, right? If you look at the distance between the x-intercepts right here, so from negative two all the way to four, right? That distance, if I was to do four minus negative two to find the distance between the x-intercepts, the distance is six, okay? Now, why is that, why am I bringing that up? Well, it's because if you look at the distance between the negative two, the first x-intercept and the vertex, from negative two all the way to one, so if I do one minus negative two, that distance is three. Same thing here, if I do the distance between this four and this one, that distance is also three, which makes sense, right? Again, I'm reinforcing that idea of symmetry between where the vertex is three, is a distance of three away. So if I go three to the left and three to the right, I end up getting my x-intercepts. Uh, the distance between the x-intercepts themselves would be six. So a little bit of uh, tidbits there about uh, the first parabola. I will go ahead and pause and graph the second one. And in our second graph here, if you notice, I pulled from graph B here, which is the negative x squared plus four. Um, this one has a couple of different attributes. Now, this one here, very similar to the other one, right? In the fact that it's still U-shaped, but what makes him different is that he's upside down. Now, I'll 
bet you can see this already. But if you had to take a guess as to why he's upside down, you are right. It has to do with this negative out here. The fact that when you square something and then multiply it by a negative, that result will ultimately become negative. Uh, the plus four, if you notice right here, this vertex right here is at zero comma four. Again, notice the symmetry here. Notice the symmetry. You are two away from your x-intercepts both times and your x-intercepts themselves are a distance of four from each other, just like the last graph. Now, the reason why I chose this one was for two reasons. One, notice that the, that the parabola is upside down. Notice the negative in front of the x squared. We've talked about this in class, the dominant term. Notice how he's negative, and that is what's dictating what this graph is going to look like. Um, the next thing is, notice how this, gra the, this graph's equation is just slightly different than the other one. In the other one, the one that we did before, there was this negative 2x. Now, notice what that did to the vertex of this parabola here. Um, the vertex was at uh, 1 comma negative 9. I'll write that over again here. 1 comma negative 9. Now, notice this one's vertex. This one's vertex is at 0 comma 4. And the reason why I bring that up is because notice how there is, there is no bx term. There's no linear term on this thing. So that made this parabola centered at zero. So a couple things to just kind of take in right there. There's not a whole lot of deep meaning to it right now when we learn how to physically graph these using a different form of a quadratic. These ideas will come up again, but just little things that you should be noticing. So I'll be back with the third graph. And we're back with our third function here. Uh, f of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I ended up pulling this one from uh, problem D here. Um, again, just kind of take it in. I mean, notice how this one here, this one's a little bit different because its vertex is actually sitting right on the x-axis. So that's why I brought this guy into play here. This is uh, x squared, um, oops, sorry. That is um, the coordinate uh, one comma zero. So notice uh, the attributes about him. Now, one thing that you should probably notice in the, uh, about this one here is, and, and in fact, all of them, uh, all of them are actually factorable. And so this one here, if you were to factor it, you would get y equals x minus 1 times x minus 1. Or for those of you who have been doing this, you could also get y equals x minus 1 in total squared. And so um, notice this equation right here. And notice how his vertex is sitting on 1, 0. And again, we have a line of symmetry just like the other one, right? Just going straight down the center. And this time, this only has one x-intercept. Now, compare him to, and I, and I apologize because I just deleted him. Compare him to this guy who factors into y equals x minus 4 times x plus 2. Notice how this is not a perfect square trinomial, but this one is. The perfect square trinomial ends up getting a parabola that bounces off of the axis. So that is something that you probably should pay attention to, uh, and that is what makes D unique among, among all of the other graphs. Um, I'm going to pull up G next, and uh, notice how G and the one we just did, D, notice how they're similar, right? And uh, they, they almost have the exact same terminologies, uh, and the, and, and, but, um, but this one seems to be reversed on the signs. Uh, we'll talk about the differences between those two in this next graph. Give me a second. And we're back. I have not yet pasted the graph in. Before I do, I want you guys to pause the video and just think about what you think is going to happen to the table and the graph when this, when this equation gets posted in. Posted in. Remember, I'm, I'm about to... Uh, I'm going to put in this g function here, which is the negative version of uh, the d. And I want you to think about what's going to happen to this graph when all of the signs change. So get ready. Three, two, one. Here we go. And hopefully you guessed that correctly, where what you have is you really do have the upside down version of what you had before. And I did my best to line, it, line these terms up here. Um, you have the upside down version of what you had before. And so um, why is that? Well, it's because if you look at this function here, 
before factoring anything using the perfect square trinomial, remember the first layer of factoring is always greatest common factor. So I can factor out a negative one, and I've mentioned this before, whenever you're factoring, the leading term should always be positive just for ease, but also it helps you really visualize what's going on on the graph. And, um, and I'm hoping you guys predicted that this happened, that you'd had an upside down version of the original graph, but you have y equals, again, I'm just gonna factor out that negative one first, and then x squared, minus 2x plus 1 will emerge on the inside. And again, notice how it's the same, right? It's the same as this guy, but negative on the outside. And so how does that impact the graph? Well, if I was to factor it even more, I'd have negative x minus 1 squared, which has the same attributes as the first parabola that we have up top here, but he's, he's completely upside down. Again, that's because the negative takes effect after the function which turns this positive, this once positive 25 into a negative 25, this once positive 16 into a negative 16, and so on and so forth. So this is our investigation into the parabola, our very first kind of getting our feet wet. Eventually, we're going to learn a tool that will take away our, our need to use a table when graphing these. Um, and uh, we will get to that very, very soon. So uh, I hope you found this useful. As always, please leave comments or questions in the comments area, and I will see you all in the next episode.